Welcome back, boys. Let's go. Done with teaching PPL ground school, at least for now. It wasn't particularly fun, but thanks for human humoring me. Today we're back in the Huey. I can't remember who made this, but I'm going to post a link to this mission in the comments on YouTube if you guys want to download it. Um, it's basically simulating an assault on Dubai airfield. So we're going to go pick up some troops, drop them into a couple places in the city, and then I think do some extractions. I started to fly it earlier, but I haven't completed it. Um, I also edited it because I think it started with the thunderstorm, and we... Guys, don't fly helicopters in thunderstorms. It doesn't work. That was ruining my immersion. Haven't done anything. Cold and dark. We have no weapons, so we're going to fly to... Where do I got to go? Here's our FARP over here. We got to fly to Al Minad Air Base, and we're going to pick up some troops, and we are going to put some guns on the door. Let me get a quick heading here. I don't think there's any navigational aid that we can use. So we're going to go over here. 15.6 miles, heading 256. Just leave it there. So without further ado, here's something that happens in the Huey sometimes. Sometimes the click spot on this door doesn't work. So you have to hit left or right control and C to close the door. Let's see, AC phase, essential bus, main gen on, battery on, inverter, main, and anti-collision lights. Shut up. Hydraulic stuff, force trim, or reset test. Fuel on. <clears throat> Roll the throttle all the way on and then close it. Clear. The rain effect's not too bad. I think this is only the second time that I've flown the Huey in the rain. It actually looks pretty good. And once we start moving, just like in real life, we'll get air blasting across the windscreen and it'll blow that off. So the gas producer, wait until we're above 40%. There it is. Take my finger off the starter. Should be enough for the generator to start turning on other electronics. We can turn on our radar altimeter. She's alive. IFF. Nav radios. VHF. UHF flares possibly going to need these and definitely going to be using the um, the FM receiver because this is how we're going to find some of our location in fact let me look at the briefing real quick I'm going to write some of these down first we're going to Almanad Air Base so we know 256 for 15.6 miles should be able to find that then it's going to be Transport troops to Al Maktoum Bridge, LZ. So we needed the radio frequency for those guys. Al Maktoum Bridge is ADF 5240 FM. So we net FARP Dallas, which is where we're at, is ADF 42 FM. And we need 43.5 for J Squad. So the first one is going to be Al Maktoum Bridge, 5240. 5240, that's on. Well, there we go. So we got deflection on our CDI. That's basically going to act as an ADF needle now. So it's basically it's going to point us in the direction that we need to go. Compass, we're pointing north north right now, so it looks like the directional gyro is already lined up. That'll do big. No light on the enunciator. Start rolling in the throttle. Everything's in the green. Governor's taking over. Here's a little trick, guys, if you're new on the Huey. Let me reset my head position. If we reset the view, and you look down, if you move the collective so that a little point on the side is just touching the inside bottom portion of the right pedal. Trim it there so it stays, and that's pretty much the exact um, cyclic input that we need when we take off. So now I'm just gonna start bringing in the collective a little bit of left pedal. <clears throat> you see, I don't really have to control or, or fumble with it. A little bit too far aft. That's pretty stable. Good hover check right there. So we're pacing north. We've got to go 256. That's so going to be a left turn.
Let's go. I have been flying a lot of Huey recently. And this is a pretty cool mission. So I don't know if you guys noticed, there's no infrared suppressor or IR suppressor on the exhaust. And I know that our man pads in this mission. I have not seen one. I didn't finish the mission before. I just kind of got in to, to see what conditions were like and to see what basically the mission was requiring us to do. So hopefully we're not going to get shot down. Hopefully not going to en encounter one of those guys. I do have the flares armed. So they're working. Get things trimmed here. West Southwest, we look out there, that's Dubai, and allegedly I think the background on this is that they've launched an assault at the Dubai International Airport. So I guess we're probably going to have to do some ops down there, which looks pretty hairy. It's cool though. I guess so. I mean, anytime you can have a successful takeoff in a helicopter, I guess I would count that as a win. So, yes. But we literally just took off, so whether or not we're going to complete the mission, I do not know. It's also looking pretty hairy over there, which is where we got to go. How you doing, Keith? How's, how's things in South Africa? But you did have a vacation recently. Those pictures look pretty cool. I'm off course here. When you guys go out there, do you go camping? Or by camping, do you guys stay in a cabin or do you bring tents and stuff? It seems kind of dangerous to do that out there. One micron of fabric between you and a hungry lion doesn't sound like a great idea. Definitely not an easy way to sleep. Stay at the lodge, gotcha. But then they let you drive around during the day in your own vehicle. of those cars get effed up by animals. So I've definitely seen a video, I don't know if it was from South Africa or somewhere else, where a car got just destroyed by a rhinoceros. Open air meaning like the vehicles that, you know, they basically put you in a cage on top of like a Land Rover or something like that. Be advised, you may encounter enemy soldiers, small arms fire, and man pads on this operation. Almanab Air Base, ETA, five minutes. Well, I mean, what causes them to attack you? 
I thought those things were territorial, which means that if you just drive through the wrong spot at the wrong time, couldn't one of those guys just thrash you? Melvin! Not at all what? Not at all that they're not territorial? <clears throat> I mean, I've definitely seen some videos of that stuff happening. How's things going, Melon? You at work? Oh, the only thing would be drive too close. Don't have to worry about me. I'd be driving in there at all. Super excited for what? Friday? Freedom? Jayu, as the Koreans like to say. Give me a sure. No, no, no. Just give me a solid answer. What are you excited for? I'm not here to put words in your mouth, boy. I guess it makes sense. You do that every year, so you probably actually have a read on what their body language is. An elephant flapping its ears to me would mean nothing. No solid answers for you. Then I'm going to leave it to my imagination. That I've seen before. What do you do if they mock charge? You just stand your ground? Seems like it'd be kind of hard to do with like an eight-ton animal doing that, or four tons, however much they. Are. I don't even know how much animals made. Yeah, I know Melon's got some lady friend coming over later, or something, something along those lines. Mind the ballpark. Also, an elephant. Pop in flares, there we got the flares, we can seat them. See, where's Deutsch when you need him? It was always good fun to make fun of Melon's lady friends with Deutsch. That guy was a savage. I feel like I'm pretty tame in terms of my ribbing. The lady at McDee's was fishing for another. <laughs> Hey, I'm not a good judge, but hey, I'm sure everybody's got a type. And what did you say? Did you get a number? Start slowing her down here. Traffic, traffic, cross the runway here, you just dive and drive. See, this is the good thing about the Huey, you can be pretty aggressive. Collective, collective, left rudder, sorry, anti-torque. Stop at the flares, I can see it. I'm a crew chief, I need somebody to clear me over here.
need to slap some guns on this bad boy. Yeah, man, don't leave us hanging. <clears throat> if you had to guess, I mean, I think we probably know Melon well enough to make an answer here. I'll, I'll give my assessed position afterwards. But do you think Melon gets all autistic if a girl asks for his number? I'm gonna say no. Melon's a pretty outgoing person. So how did you answer? What did you say to her? I mean, unless she was fugly, then you could be like, yeah, I'm married. Sorry, I just forgot my ring in the car. Here we go, get you guys free to return fire. Is she hot or not? You're playing a long game or she is? Right, I'm not gonna retrim it. Pretty stable when we land it. We'll leave it there. Let's go. Hey. Nice touch for ambiance. Do a little hover taxi. Yeah, so explain, are you playing the long game or is she? Let's go. Take off from the taxiway. That could mean a number of things. just turning. We're going to use our vertical deflection down the CDI to find where the signal is coming from to go drop these guys off. Keep it coming. There she comes. Oh, there you go. 3-5 here. If we start getting contact, I'm going to have to dive down because, again, I said there's man pads and we don't have those IR suppressors on. I think they're freaking ugly. Players only. people do, this is a trigger based mission, right? So you're flying from trigger zone to trigger zone. So we kind of have to do that, but I guarantee 
They basically made a straight line from that first point of departure to where we're going, and they probably filled that up with enemies. So if I wanted to, I could just fly, like, way east or west. I have no problem. Scott, how you doing, buddy? We're solo air cab today. Air mobile. I do have Kilgore's Huey livery for uh, DCS. I should have flown that today. Just pretty much only use these. I think the 187. It's such a good movie. Looking real good. There's a guy down there. I see him right below the helicopter right there. Doesn't look like he has a shoulder fired weapon. Shoot him! What are we listening to? Scott I, I, Scott, I think, is an audiophile. I can't remember how many times he talked to me about headphones and speakers and guitar amps and stuff. I'm a, uh, a, a quote-unquote good enough. So you've objectively found the best headphones. Sennheiser XL Urbanites, in case anybody's wondering. I trust this man's opinion. They're, I don't have a problem with wired headphones. My PC headphones are wired. Too. I feel like I'm uh, probably because I'm older, or we're a little bit older, but I just feel like I can trust those better. It's all the shooting, huh? How does that work, though, if you're mobile? What do you use for an aim? How big is a small head in? It's portable, obviously, but is it like the size of your cell phone or what? There we go. Answer my questions. That's pretty cool. Great 
album, great song. Pink Floyd's always been one of my favorite bands, and David Gilmour was one of my biggest guitar influences growing up. Let's see if we can start slowing down a little bit here. Although, when I left Korea, oh yeah, dude, Gilmore is god tier. When I left Korea, though, uh, my coworkers gave me some of those Bluetooth um, earphones, like the in ear earbuds. You know what I'm talking about. And I'm actually surprised at how good those sound. Oh shit, blue or green tracers are bad. Green tracers are bad. Red tracers, I don't mind. The green ones are the big caliber. Oh shit, there's guys all over the place. Almost put it in the trees back there. Um, I don't know what I think they're the official whatever whichever one they are, they're the official ones that are for Android. Uh where do I gotta go? J Squad 43.5 if the radio still works. It does. Oh shit. Except for with first-person shooters, sometimes like the bass is way overdone. I've had to turn down the bass on a lot of games. Normally, particularly with flight sims, it's great. Yeah, not overpowering bass. It's also dependent on the game. Definitely got some speed holes in here now. Everybody's still alive, though. So the primary thing I need to be careful about is getting the radio shot out. thousand dollar headphones I was about to say that's kind of got you have like basically an accountant that just handles your audio stuff for you
we can't go in there now. I imagine all that kind of stuff's closed down because of coronavirus restrictions. I can let somebody just go in and try on headphones. I had to go to Costco to pick up um, uh, eyeglass prescriptions for somebody. And they made you, if you took something off the shelf, you had to put it back in a basket. They let one person in at a time. Pretty ridiculous. Yeah, but you can't go test them now, you know what I mean? Those guys are on the other side of these buildings. Oh, hello. Yeah, bud, we got it. Some copter in skills, eh? <laughs> I don't know, I've never been there. I hope not. So these guys gotta go to Shiraj? Shiraja Airport? Somewhere over here to the east, northeast. That one was easier than the first landing. I'll take that one all day. In fact, I think that's the tower. guys and it's back to the farm which is 42. I thought that was warm for you guys. 60 degrees here, it feels warm. Are we being sarcastic? It's been a pretty mild winter down here so far. I don't know what it's been like up in New York. I'm not complaining though, I hate cold weather. Guys, this is totally, well, it's not totally unrelated. It has to do with helicopter flying, I guess, but I'm not sure if you guys have heard of Jocko Willink. He's this former Navy SEAL guy. Um, he has his own podcast, and he hosts a number of different people, but he had someone named, uh, shit, what's his name? John Stryker Meyer. His call sign was Tilt, and he was like a Mac V SOG guy, so studies and observations. They're like the Green Beret Special Forces in Vietnam. And those guys, Episode 180, 181, 182, I think 247 and 248. Those are some of the craziest stories that I've ever heard. A lot of crazy helicopter stories, too. Like, just unbelievable stuff. Yeah, heavy snowstorms and crap, that is not for me. Do yourself a favor, though, if you're into podcasts. Go check out Jocko Willink and start an episode 180. I 
guess these guys technically some of what they did was intelligence because they would go and get you know eyes on enemy troop movements in Laos. So technically they were spies gathering intelligence, but some of this stuff, man, like going against six guys, six man team against three regiments of NBA. So what's a regiment is about ten thousand. So thirty thousand guys versus sixty or six. Holy hell. David Drake. Check that guy out. Kind of doing normal landing here. Not under fire. Chapel Hill, North Carolina. It's right down the road from me, basically. Where's Chapel Hill, South Carolina? I'm pretty sure that's North Carolina. Try to close, I gotta get to these guys. Two years is a long time. I mean, some of those guys, I think, one guy said he did 13 of these missions, which was high for them. They had over a 100% casualty rate. Two years is a long time. All right, those guys are off. Go back to the far 42 FM is already on there. Bye. Do a little pedal turn. Some airspeed. There's some ETL. Yeah, dude, one month would be too long. I, the, the first story in uh, Jocko Willing's podcast from that guy I was talking about, episode 180. His first story, I mean, you couldn't leave. Like, unless you get wounded or something, you can't just quit and go home. They're in the middle of nowhere. But his first story, like, I don't know how. Psychologically, someone made it through a 12 or 13 month deployment doing that kind of stuff. I mean, they were talking about six guys, two Americans and four indigenous troops. They killed so many guys with those six that the enemy was like stacking up bodies to make room for them to get to the position where they were at. Absolutely insane stories. And the cool thing, well, I mean, it's not cool. He experienced all this, but listening to the podcast, the first story from his first mission is insane. And you listen to it, and you're like, no way, possibly gets any worse than that. Then the next episode, he tells another story, and it's even worse than that. And then the third episode is the same way. And then we jump to 247. And one of the guys that he talks about in there, they're reading his book, talking about one of his missions, and oh my god. These guys... They were on the ground overnight. They killed so many people that they made a citadel, basically, like a fortress out of the bodies of the enemy to use as sandbags while they were waiting for an extraction. Insane, insane stories. And the crazy thing is, so these guys, all their missions were classified for 20 years. Yeah, they couldn't talk about any of it for 20 years. They didn't even talk to each other about it. They had no photos or anything. Well, I mean, I guess a handful of... Oh. Three U.S. soldiers separated from their platoon, currently being trailed by an unknown enemy, a number of enemy insurgents. The extraction, ADF 5520, near Dubai Airport. That's where all the smoke is. 55... Yeah, that's basically what he said. Well, you definitely don't want to be flying towards that. Cree 
we had a cool story, one well, again, not a cool story, it's insane to think about, but something that's just absolutely mind-boggling. Um, what is it, the, uh, the Cho Sun Reservoir? Choshin? Chosin? I think C-H-O-S-I-N, Chosin Reservoir. It was the biggest Marine Corps retreat, but they held off, I think, I want to say another 20, 30,000 advancing Chinese soldiers for a couple days, what happens. Just insane stories of bravery. It's something, I mean, the good thing about listening to stuff like that is it puts all of your shit in perspective, you know what I mean? Everybody has foibles and problems and troubles and everything like that, but if you hear somebody who lived through something like that, all of a sudden everything else seems kind of meaningless in comparison. It's a little bit easier to get through day to day, you know what I mean? Especially thinking about some of these guys, like the stories that I was just telling you, these guys are like 18, 19, 20 years old. Imagine doing that shit when you're 20 years old. Now, freaking 20 year old, look at them now. They all think that if someone calls them the wrong gender, it's like a, a an act of violence or something. It's disgusting. Man up, you pussies. I don't know about this guy. It's Microaggressions, yeah. Anybody who has that as a regular part of for their vocabulary or verbal repertoire, I can't handle. What was Crazy Eddie's? I would hope you had a hot young girlfriend when you were a hot young man. Brought it out and went to bed. What were they doing? Like money laundering or something? It's helicopters? We have you nearby popping red flares. Deadhead. Stealing like a mother. What year was that? I mean, Looking back in time, going to like the 70s and early 80s and stuff, there's so many mind-boggling stories of just incredible illegality. Like, I'm pretty into racing on the side. Like, I follow sports car racing and Formula One and stuff like that. And I remember hearing stories out of Atlanta where drug smugglers would land their airplanes on the back straightaway of the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Or not Atlanta Motor Speedway, but Road Atlanta. And they would load up their planes and take, it out, take off in and out of there. That was just a normal thing for people to do. We got soft, guys. Oh shit, green tracers. Red tracers I can handle. I mean, it's all relative. It seems like back then in the, the late 70s, pretty much all the way through the 90s, it's not even a matter of being crazy. It's just normal business is to be doing crazy illegal shit. The only people that were crazy are the ones that got caught. Oh, Lord.
You know, that's the thing. They would falsify stock, warehouse records, and stuff for the IRS. I guarantee you, like, tons of businesses were doing that back in the day. Like I said, the only people that ever got, I mean, the crazy were the ones were the ones that got caught. That's true, that's true. I don't need real friends. I do have a, um, a crazy friend in real life. He used to be a helicopter pilot before he got his fixed wing certifications and stuff. I'm not going to say his name, but uh, that guy, he, he barrel rolled a Learjet. Yeah, now the scammers are all like Nigerian princes and stuff like that. Guys like working out of other countries and crap trying to, to get your social security number. Keep good talking to you, bud. Glad you're still alive after your safari. Have a good one. Stay safe and stay, stay sane. Hey, dude, check out uh, the No Agenda podcast. If you haven't already, that seems like it would be right up your alley. Sim mode, brah. Don't mess around with that cheap-ass noob shit. Uh, I get it off of Stitcher, but they're pretty much on pretty much every major podcast streaming app, or probably iTunes. Let's go get that body. Let's do a damage assessment. Surprisingly, unscathed. Other than holes in the windows. Got some speed holes over here. A couple down there. Definitely some uh, extra airflow over there. Just like throwing them up there. Uh, bruh, I have a the T16000 everything. I got the T16000 stick, the throttle, and the rudder pedals. I had a friend that used to work for uh, the luggage floaters at the airport, and he'd just talk about like slamming bags up there. <laughs> it's like, I swear, you guys, come on. That's kind of an asshole thing to do. If it's just somebody, you know, some stock at a store like that, okay. Dude, yeah, well, I mean, if, if you'd seen some of the videos of me when I first started flying helicopters in here, it was not smooth at all. The key is the force trim. Like, if I take my hands, that's my hands off the controls and stuff now, and I'm just holding in that rudder, or the quote-unquote anti-torque pedal. If I let go of that, then it gets all wonky. This is a good helicopter to fly to, to learn, though, because there's no stability augmentation, but it's really forgiving. So you can get it into vortex ring stake pretty easy, but it's also easy to get out. Electra, the record company? Remember Electra? Back when I was like a kid listening to Metallica. They were on Electro Records, weren't they? Pretty sure. Docking. That's a name I haven't heard in ages. Alright, once I get back to the farm, I'm gonna do some hammerheads. We'll do some crazy shit. Scud running too. Yeah, boy. So 
those wire cutters on the nose are for. White Lion. That's a, the name sounds familiar. What song did they do? What was their big hit? See, I was too young for all that stuff, but when I was growing up, I always had a soft spot for 80s music. Same thing with Great White. I remember the name, but I couldn't tell you what songs they did. Power wires going under them. This is the only way to fly helicopters, guys. Trust me, I'm a federally certified pilot. Tiffany, I only became aware of recently because I saw a meme of somebody, or one of her record covers, and I was like, who the fuck is this? Whitney Houston, my mom was a fan, so I had to endure many hours of that pap when I was a kid. Could be worse. I mean, I could probably think of some other things off the top of my head that are not particularly great. John Denver, I would say, objectively better than Whitney Houston. At least it's like, it's comfortable music, you know what I mean? He's not my cup of tea, but I can I can stomach John Denver more than I can get Whitney Houston. Let's see how low we can go. Let's watch our radar altimeter here. John Denver is kind of like plain grits. You know what I mean? It's not going to offend anybody. So, I'm hit or miss on, on disco. Not a huge fan, but some of it, at least, I don't know, like rhythm or beat-wise, okay, I can get it, I can understand. I'm gonna land first so I can complete the mission, just for uh, the sake of it, and then I'll do a couple of hammerheads. Yeah, I know my mom is really into disco. Don't know about Greece. Yeah, let's start slowing her down. Pretty sure that's the farm right there. Was he the guy that did the marketing for Greece? trimmed for a decent hover and then I'll uh, do some crazy boys. Uh, 
there. Hey! Alright. Let's see if I can do this without killing myself. So, Hammerhead, we're gonna get some forward airspeed. We're gonna pull the nose up, go vertical, and then use the anti torque pedals to roll it. We'll go left. Get away from these poles. J-hook it, see if we can swing it around for a landing. Oh, rotor RPM's dropping. We got it. Dude from Pink Floyd with the mullet. I don't the only people in Pink Floyd I know are like the primary members. Face wise, and maybe the woman who did the solo for Great Gig in the Sky, the vocal solo. She might as well have been a full time honorary member in my book. the touring sax player. Yeah, I would hope she was smoking hot. She's dating one of the guys in Pink Floyd, touring with him. If you didn't, that guy sucks. Try one more. Let's go. So I wish I could watch the replays of these. Track IR. I'm not a, for a while, I had the original Oculus, which is good, but um, I haven't tried any of the new headsets. But I find that I enjoy Track IR better because the resolution is better. It's easier to read gauges and stuff like that. It's kind of hard. It's kind of a pain in the ass with at least the original uh, Gen VR. I don't know what the newer ones are like. Damn, Scott, I'm jealous. You get to see them live in 88, that's a base. 
Also, I guess, hey, there's the guy that made this mission, if anyone's interested. Enfield11, the fraternity sim.com. It was on the, um, what do we call it, the user files download thing for TCS. Oh, shit, it's four, well, 4K resolution, but think about your computer has to render that twice. So I got a 1080 Ti. I don't think that's going to work anymore. It was fine for the original Vive, but definitely not 4K times two. If you got a beefy computer, hell yeah, dude. The other thing was peripheral vision. Peripheral vision is a little bit limited in, in, again, the original Oculus. I don't know what it's like in the newer one. Yeah, you need a pretty beefy computer to run that. So if you only got is a little po' boy computer like me, uh, track IR, dude. What was the original headset, the original Oculus? Do you know how many the FOV was? This tough guy out here in the back just standing there, no umbrella. One other thing that I'm super excited for in DCS is the MI24. That is going to be badass. For I, I thought they were going to to release it by the fall sale because during the fall sale teaser that DCS released or the Eagle Dynamics released, they teased the MI24. So I was like, oh sure, it's coming in, in the end of October, and they didn't. They lied to me. And that's the other thing too, which I, I'm pretty sure that I'm mentioning here a whole bunch. Like I, the F-14 is my favorite airplane. I fly airplanes anyway. Um, but helicopters are way freaking cooler to fly in a sim. It's a lot harder, and it'll make you a better pilot, too. Using the anti-torque pedals gets you good at coordinating and stuff like that. Anyway, dudes. Bruh, Nanez, thanks for the follow. Scott, good hanging out, good talking to you, bud. Uh, feels like I haven't seen you in a while, because I, A, I haven't really been streaming much, but haven't posted on YouTube. You said you got kicked off, right? I'll probably be back tomorrow. I was supposed to fly tomorrow morning, but the weather looks like it's going to be shit, so... I will probably come back, maybe flash my 14s or something. You, you, you said something verboten. You weren't allowed to. You got kicked off by the fascists. Or you forgot your password and used the wrong one too many times to get back in. I don't know. Honestly, it's better this way because you, you can talk in real time. You know, I don't have to t clack out a response to you if you ask a question or something, you know. The 4K upscaler on what, YouTube? I, I, I'm a Luddite when it comes to some of that stuff. I don't even know what that means. Is that a channel? See, I don't even know what that means. I watch some of the most boring shit on YouTube, too. Like model building <laughs> in Craft 2. I'm all over the place. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. Never heard of him. Anyway. Bye for real, guys. Scott, again, good talking to you. Melon, if you're still out there listening, thanks. Thanks for the gift subs, all that kind of stuff. Probably be back tomorrow. We'll see ya. We love ya. Have a good Friday. Enjoy your weekends. Have a drink for me. Peace.